Let's take a look at how you calculate total return on a bond. Now we're used to looking at yield to maturity and the mistake that we oftentimes make is we assume that yield to maturity is the actual return on the bond and that's not correct. Yield to maturity is a promised yield at the time of purchase and it requires two things. That the bond is held to maturity and that all coupon interest payments are reinvested at the yield to maturity. If the coupons are reinvested at a rate lower than the yield to maturity, then the total return will be lower. And uh, if the uh, coupons are reinvested at a higher rate than the yield to maturity, then the total return will actually be higher. So let's take a look at this. Um, here are the steps. The first step is we need to compute the total coupon payments plus interest based on the, the assumed reinvestment rate. So basically the coupons represent an annuity. So if we calculate the present value of that annuity, I'm sorry, the future value of that annuity, then we have the coupon interest plus the interest on interest that you get. And so we use this future value for an annuity formula. Okay. Second, we want to determine the projected sale price at the end of the planned holding period. Okay, so we're going to need to know what's the uh, yield to maturity for that for that bond when we sell the bond. Okay, and then we're going to calculate what price we can sell it for. And then we're going to add those steps one and two together. And this gives us the total future dollars that will be received given the assumed reinvestment rate. So we'll be getting the, the um, price that we sell the bond for and we'll also be getting the coupon payments and any interest we receive on the coupon payments. Okay, once we've done that, we simply calculate the return. And here we're going to calculate the semi-annual total return. It's the total future dollars, okay, that's step three, divided by the purchase price of the bond, and it's going to be raised to the one over h power minus one, and H is the number of six-month periods in the investment horizon. If you did this annually, then you'd divide by one over the number of years um, in the investment horizon. Okay, and then the final step is, is that the return that we found in step four was a semi-annual rate, so in order to get that total return, we need to double the interest rate we found in, uh, in step four. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a three-year time horizon and we're considering purchasing a 20-year 8% coupon bond for $828.40. Okay? If you work it out, if you work out uh, a 20-year bond paying semi-annual payments, so it would pay $40 every six months, uh, 40 periods, okay? with a yield to maturity of 10%, you'll get a price of $828.40. We're going to assume that the reinvestment rate is 6%. Okay? And we're also going to assume at the end of the holding period, okay, the 17-year the holding period, uh, the yield to maturity will be 7% for the bond when we sell it. We're going to need that to calculate the price of the bond. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is compute the total coupon payments plus interest based on the assumed reinvestment rate. Okay, we said the rate was 6%, but it's 3% per six month period. Okay, we're going to have six three month periods. So, we're going to put it into this formula, 3% here, uh, six periods here, and $40 is the, uh, the coupon. And if we work it out, we get $258.74. Step two is we need to determine the projected selling price for the bond. Okay, It matures in 17 years, so that means we have 34 six month period, so n is 34. We said the yield to maturity was 7%, so 
So the interest per period is 3.5. The payment is $40. The future value, 1,000. And if we compute the present value, we get 1,098 and 50 cents. Okay, and that makes, that makes sense. Interest rates have gone down from 10% to 7%. So the price of the bond should go up and it goes up to 1,098 and 50 cents. So step four, let's calculate that semi-annual return. The total future dollars are going to be the coupons plus the interest on interest plus the price we sell the bond for divided by the price we paid for the bond, raised to the one-sixth power, right? There are six three-month periods, minus one. If we work that out, we get 0.0858 or 8.58% for a six-month period. And then the final step is just to double that, and we get a total return of 17.16%. So this is different from the yield to maturity. Okay, you would get that yield to maturity if you held the bond, um, if you held the bond the entire time period and you reinvested at that 10% rate. But that's not the case here. So because interest rates went down, it turned out that uh, you got a nice, uh, a nice increase in the price you sold the bond for, and it turns out that your total return is 17.16%.